Hello and welcome to a demo of Badfish Enterprise. My name is Rathul and today I will show you how you can troubleshoot cloud network connectivity within minutes. If you operate a cloud network in AWS, Microsoft Azure or GCP, you probably know how troubleshooting connectivity problems can be quite tricky. End-to-end -end connectivity depends on the configuration and interconnection of many many entities such as security groups, network ACLs, subnet routing tables, load balancers, NATs, transit gateways, VPC peerings, internet gateways, and so on. Making matters worse, traditional tools like Traceroute, which we've come to rely on to debug connectivity in physical networks, do not work in cloud environments. When packets are not getting through, you may not even know where to look first. Batfish Enterprise enables you to troubleshoot cloud network connectivity in minutes. Let me show you how. This is the Batfish Enterprise dashboard. It displays your entire cloud topology so you can easily understand how resources are interconnected. My deployment is spread across two regions, East and West. Each region has multiple VPCs belonging to different business groups. Intra-region connectivity is provided via transit gateways, one here and one here. Connectivity is provided via VPC peering links that you can see here. Our deployment also has internet gateways here and here and NATs and load balancers that you can see here. The active configuration of your AWS deployment is automatically retrieved and visualized by Batfish. Batfish also archives your past configurations, so you can troubleshoot both historical and active issues. Let's see how we can use Batfish to quickly root cause a user complaint. Say we got a complaint, then some users are unable to access the public HR web server over here via HTTP. The application team is saying, that the servers are up and serving traffic to many other users without showing any errors. So it must be a network issue. Now sifting through and piecing together the configuration information about your VPC, subnets, routing tables, network ACLs, why the AWS CLI will take forever. With Batfish, you can easily identify the network configuration problem or conclusively prove that network is not to blame. To do that, we will leverage the traceout functionality of Batfish here. To reproduce the user problem, we will run this traceroute from the internet to the server of interest, which is this one. And since the complaint talks about HTTP traffic, we'll run this traceroute over HTTP. Now instantly, Batfish shows us how this traffic traverses our infrastructure. We see that the packets travel from the internet via the AWS backbone through internet gateway and through their VPC router and the subnet and then the server over here. Batfish not only shows the path, but it also shows in detail what happens along each hop in the path. So for instance, at the internet gateway, we can see the packet enters there first, then it actually gets transformed. The transformation is that the destination IP gets changed from public IP of the server to the private IP of the server, which is essentially encoding AWS semantics from there, the packet makes it via the VPC router to the subnet. At the subnet router, we see that packet passes through a filter, which is the network ACL. And in this case, this filter is actually permitting the traffic to go on and it goes on to the server. At the server, we see that the packet is being filtered out and it's filtered out because of the security groups here. To understand why the security group dropped the packet, we can click on the link here. This view shows what happens to the packet when it encounters a security group. In particular, this is showing is that the packet was dropped because it did not match any of the lines in the security group. AWS security groups are whitelist only. So what this result is showing us that there is not a single rule in the security group that is allowing these packets. I will fix this issue on the AWS console. You could have done that via Terraform or CloudFormation as well. This was a server of interest. It shows the security groups here and if we see inbound rules, we see HTTP is not allowed and only HTTPS is allowed here. Perhaps this is why some users could connect. Those who were coming over HTTPS could correctly connect to the server, but those using HTTP could not. So what we can do here is go here, edit inbound rules, add a rule for HTTP, the second thing from everywhere, and then just call it HTTP access now save this rule now we have permitted http traffic now because a configuration change has been made batfish will automatically fetch new configuration from the network this indicator shows our new configuration is here so our data looks pretty similar of course we have only changed the security group 
but we can go here as we did before to see what happened to the query we were doing HTTP and run our fix has been successful our packets can make it all the way to the server and back as an added bonus we can also quickly check if the packets can make it back as well so we click on the bidirectional link here and run the trace route and what this view shows you is what happens to packets in the forward direction on the left and what happens to packets in the reverse direction on the right here. So we can see that packets can make it from the internet to the server and from the server to the internet and thus our users should be happy now. Thanks for watching this Batfish Enterprise demo. In this video I showed you how Batfish Enterprise enables you to troubleshoot cloud network connectivity within minutes. It provides an unprecedented level of detail into network paths as well as relevant routing and security rules along it. This visibility helps you to quickly find fix and test connectivity issues that otherwise would have taken multiple hours to tackle. Want to experience this in your own infrastructure? Get your own free trial of Batfish Enterprise at that URL. Goodbye now.